Michael was another that lived without the love of a mother nor the other Not the story of a brother, not using a rubber Father was a militant roster back in the early 80s Lick banks, built hood schools so you could learn your babies A course poser, jag with the chauffeur Also sent paper to the rebel fighters in Angola Cause back then, the OGs understood The mission of the system for planting division in the hood Real, real soldier spirit hustle may be part of living If you did it, never spat it in your living They was training, raising bars, martial arts Exploding recently, following your new F-64 Mm -hmm. How was the response from your perspective? You, you'd set the bar high from your first one, so how did you approach this one? Um, I think the response was good. I'm always pleased with, with the response, whatever the response is, do you know what I mean? It's like you put your art out there and you never really know how people are going to react. You've got a sense, but you never know fully what... And obviously the first F64 created quite a bit of hype. Yeah. And the fire in the booth created a little bit of hype. So it was a lot to follow, I suppose, but I, I felt pretty confident that it was good content. And I almost felt like the first FC4, I liked it, but I think there was a few things in it that for me needed correcting almost, in the sense that spending so much time as I've spent in countries like Brazil and South Africa and all those places over the last seven, eight, nine years, it can make you almost lose perspective of how you felt when you were 16 or 17 growing up yeah, in London. Yeah. In London terms, I was poor. Yeah. In the world, I was rich. Right, because the bottom line is, yeah. if you eat most days of the week, which I did for my whole life, and if you have running water all the time, you're rich in this world, right? Mm. But that doesn't mean that I felt rich compared yeah. to the yeah. people around me, right? And so I feel like the first F64, if you don't know the rest of my material, it could have been a bit like, mm, yeah, I rate my man's message, but... It's not relating to... No, you know, particularly the line, the ghetto's in our head. I thought about that line for a long time after I said yeah, it. Yeah, because you changed it when you... Yeah, I changed it when I performed it, because I think it's just a dumb line. Like, there's ghettos everywhere in the world. Yeah. Like, two people in Brazil, the ghettos in America ain't real ghettos. Does that make sense? Yeah. A person in a Brazilian favela will be like, what are you not in Harlem complaining about? That ain't no ghetto. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the fact that the ghettos in Britain ain't as bad as ghettos in America or South America or Africa or, or wherever in the world you want to choose doesn't make mean they're not ghettos. And by saying stuff like you'll, you'll kind of alienate people. So I think yeah. you have to be yeah. careful with your words and it's easy to, once you're comfortable in life and once your life's good, and then you go to places like Brazil, which I went for months. Seeing how people cope with a reality that is so far beyond anything you can even imagine. Seeing how people cope living literally with youths on their block with M16s and hand grenades. And people are just smiling, just yeah. want to be nice. The man them, when I told them, when the man then realized I wasn't Brazilian, because everyone assumed I was, they put that M16 to the side and run over, yo, welcome to my hood, come in, have a, have a cup of tea, have a drink. So that kind of reaction overwhelmed me and made me, I think, lose sight to some degree. And so I felt like with this F64, it was a bit about redressing the balance and revisiting what's going on in the UK and the very real struggles that exist here. They're not any less important just because there's other places in the world that are worse. What we do have here though is opportunities. Um, to get out of this. Not necessarily to get out of them, because a lot of that's like a, 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 a golden carrot dangled in front of your yeah, nose. Yeah. If you just work hard enough and obey all the rules, you're going to make it well. Not always. There's a lot yeah. of people with degrees out of jobs, particularly people with degrees from particular backgrounds mm. that are far less likely to be employed than people from other yeah. backgrounds. So it's not as simple to say if you work hard, you get somewhere. Mm. What we do have is access to some tools to make our existence better. And I feel like as an artist, my job is to try and encourage and create a coolness around accessing those things, and around being intelligent. I'm not saying to no one be a pussy, but to be frank, to yeah. use the yeah. language. Yeah. I'm not saying to no one be a punk and let no one mug you off. That ain't got nothing to do with your intelligence. Do you understand? You can be intelligent and be able to defend yourself. You know, you can be intelligent and get girls, you know? I know that. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not saying, I'm not trying to sell you a lifestyle like, be a nerd. You know what I mean? Like, be a, or a neek or whatever it is, idiot names we give it. Because we look at all these people that we think are so successful. We look at these countries like Japan. How did they get there? By being neeky, right? Yeah. So when we're like, oh, fuck education, what we're essentially saying is, fuck progress. Yeah. And so I feel like, I know it's a roundabout way of saying it, but the new F64 was about looking at the struggle in the UK, but also looking at the reality of that struggle. Popular choice. If you want, if you want to vote for the F64, the first one, raise your hand, please. Okay, looks like the fire in the booth is going to be the winner. If you want to vote for the fire in the booth, raise your hand. We have an overwhelming winner in the house. I gotta be honest, I prefer the fire in the booth too. So thanks. Fuck it. I'm not even going to do it with the beat. Fuck it. Listen. 
<laughs> yes, I grew up on the door in a single parent family. Been through a little bit of tragedy. Yes, I was around drugs and violence before the day that I started secondary, and that's part of it, not half of it. Get the picture, the rest ain't necessary. Growing up, got a little caught up, but that ain't even half of my life. I was also given the knowledge of self that is all we actually need to survive. So if you saw me, age nine, reading Malcolm, just fine. Teachers still treated me stupid. Students, the girls speak English, they put me in groups with. And the irony is, some of the first men to keep me school, you were called gangsters. How you already explained that we know what the truth is They used to say don't be like me Yeah I got a name and don't on the street Night time comes, I can't sleep It's the part that rappers don't speak We don't hit the road cause we're thugs Don't come out the room wanna sell drugs If we got the right guidance and love Would we fight people just like us? How could I knock the hustle to get by? How do you think I ate as a child? Judge no one, done many things wrong Just don't boast about it in songs But listen to my older bars I was just as confused as you probably are But you grow when you Having seen YouTube videos and things on the internet have bought into theories on the Illuminati and other global agendas. And whilst there are some worthy points for us to consider, it can be somewhat of a distraction from real life issues. What do you think of all this? And what would your advice be to those people that buy into these things? I think exactly that. Uh, you, I find, and you kind of said it in the question, I think, distraction from practical issues. I'm not saying that there are no global agendas going on, because clearly there are agendas in the world but I don't like to believe there's five men in a room governing every single event. If me and you decide to go out right now on the street and do certain things, no one can control that. And the world isn't that easily controllable and pawnable. And I think it's a powerless ideology to yeah. believe that there's five men in a room and everything they say is what's gonna happen in the world. And while we're so busy looking for triangles in rap videos, there's real things going on that we need to be dealing with, you know? Practical things happening in our communities on a day-to-day -day basis. So I just think it's a complete fucking waste of time. And I ask myself, not saying we should analyse, by the way, what mm. the content of rap music, because yeah. we should, but we should also analyse the content of heavy metal, the content of video games, the content, why is it only rap music? Yeah. The one area where black males dominate that happens to be the one thing associated with the yeah. worst group in the world, really? But computer games that teach kids how to rape and shoot and kill and kill particular people, none of that, no, 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 just rap music. I'm just like, come on, it's a bit watch. How do we stay productive? Knowledge, focus, reading, discussion, turn off the telly you know, at a certain time. Or manage what you watch on telly. You know what I mean? Don't go home and just put the telly on after a day out. That would be my main yeah. advice to people, you know? Is when you come home from work, wherever you're feeling shitty, develop a habit of reading a book. Develop a, develop a habit of having political conversations with your mates. Don't let no one tell us politics is boring. That's your life. You know, politics is going to affect you. You can say it's all politics, then the next moment you ain't got no job and your tax has gone up and this has happened, well that's the result of politics, guess what? Because you don't understand it, now you're in a particular situation and someone's convinced you that politics is sneaky, you shouldn't be interested and politics affects you every day, right? So I would say to people, just cultivating habits, we're not going to save the world, one individual, you know, we go along and make a song and now the world's different, it doesn't work, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, do, we do what we can, but if we cultivate productive habits and productive mentalities, we can play a small part in hopefully quelling some of the some of the fuckery out there, in the words of Peter Tosh. But yeah, just don't waste time for trying to rap videos. I don't think it's really the most productive use of your time. There's a lot of books you could be reading while you're while you're worrying about. Uh, the next book check won't be for a while. I've got to leave it for a couple other people to do it. I know Jaja said he's gonna do one. You know, I'd love to see rappers that I know read that maybe yeah. some people don't expect them to read. You know, any good rapper is going to read at some point in their life, or well, you're not going to be any good boy. Mm. I'd like to see, man, I think it's more powerful in some way. Yeah. Now everyone fucking expects, if uh, someone's going to do a book check, it'll never be a car, like, or low yeah. you know? <laughs> It's kind of predictable, but at the same time, I feel like coming from other men and seeing that I don't see myself as any different. All these fucking bollocks, tags, road rap, conscious, I don't see myself as any different. You know, yeah. you know I, I haven't. I wasn't born to the most wonderful of circumstances. I'm not saying I had the worst life in the world, I'm just saying, I think I got to a stage where I got so bored of everyone lying that I stopped emphasizing particular aspects of my life. I'm not saying I was ever the big man on the block because I wasn't. What I am saying is I've made some mistakes in my life. I just decided not to make all of my songs about the mistakes that I've made because I got so bored of listening to every rapper pretending that they sold the most copious amounts of crap and shot 74 million people that I just, I just wanted to do something really different. I was a bit bored with that. What's next for Akala in 2012? Um, Akala, 
it's a bit pompous to refer to myself in the first person, so fuck that. Um, but now I'm, I'm working on a script, a TV drama script for a, a terrestrial channel. I can't say which one at the moment yet because it might not make it to screens. But they know roughly what the story is. They've commissioned me to write it. We'll see where it goes. It's a free part at the moment. We'll see what happens. So that's been taking up a lot of my time, but I feel like it's a story that need, needs to be told and people would like. Working on a new mixtape, free download mixtape that I'm going to put out probably end of next month. Um, finally released the book on my website, Double Thoughts, uh, and mamstore.co.uk forward slash a card of music, all that shit. And then, new album, hopefully end of the year. Big up DJ Specs on the decks, by the way. Nah, nah, come on, better than that. Big up DJ Specs on the decks, by the way. Second generation, black Caribbean and half white Scottish, whatever that means. See, lately, I feel confused with the boxes. Cause to me, all they do is breed conflict. It's not that I've lost touch with reality of racism, sexism and nationality. Just to me, all seems like insanity. Why must I rob you of your humanity to feel good about mine? It's all about crime, dehumanizing, how I justify them. So I must keep lying about the history of Africa. So I can live with the massacres and repeat my mantra, Muslim. Terrorists so I can sleep at night as bombs take flight Eyes open wide but I'm blind to the sight Too busy chasing the perfect life And the working class keep them uneducated